So I'm Eugene and I'm going to be talking today about Docker. So this is going to be a short little tutorial about how to use Docker. I won't be diving too much into the theory of what Docker is and why it works. I'll just talk about how to use it and how you can start Dockerizing your applications. So I started, I've used Docker Compose as a separate tool I'll get onto later. I've used Docker Compose for a while. At the start of this year, I took a bit of a dive into Docker. I, I started exploring more of the concepts and why it works, and I really like it. So I'm going to talk, hopefully you guys will start to like it as well, and maybe it'll come in handy for you. So what is Docker? So this is taken from the official website. It's quite fancy. It lets you actually pack up your code into, little Im into images, and then you can send it anywhere and run it in a consistent environment. So why would you want to do that? It's portable, so you don't need to run lots of commands to get something installed on a system. You can just run one command and it all starts up, and it's consistent across multiple machines. So if I gave anyone in the audience a copy of, a, of an image, they can then build that and then have the code running in, a, in the same environment as I would. It saves you time from one command. You can start up lots of things. You don't need to have lots of terminal windows open and running each part of your application, each say the database and the web server and other like background workers. You can just do it all in one. And it also gives you freedom. You're able to try out anything really. And if it messes up or installs anything dodgy, it's okay, because it's all happening in the isolated environment. So when you try something and it doesn't work out, you don't have to hunt through your files and installing everything. You can just delete the container and it's all good. Basically prevents this. So how do you install it? You see, you look on Docker's official website, nice and easy on Linux. You just run an install script and it kills something down and does all sorts of magic. On Windows, you need to install Docker Desktop. Same for Mac, that's what I do. I have my Windows machine and I'm using Docker Desktop. It gives you a fun little GUI and it also allows you to use the commands as you would on Linux. So this is a short, so speaking about portability and isolation, it sounds like Docker is very similar to VMs and it kind of is, but there's quite a key difference where rather than having a guest OS for each application, in Docker you have the container manager that, that handles the resources for each application. I won't go into too much detail about the differences between VMs and Docker because it's quite a deep topic. But essentially, you don't want to use Docker to properly isolate systems. If you're downloading something from some ad written website, you don't want to use Docker to make sure it doesn't mess up your machine. You don't want to use a VM. And the same if you're testing an entire system, say you're practicing deployment to a Ubuntu system, you'd want to practice, you'd want to do that on a VM where you can hand where you can configure everything. But apart from that, Docker is great. You can use it for web processes, for other applications, you can use it for anything basically. So an image, this is just a bit of theory before I get into the demo. So an image is basically like a description of how you can start your application. So you describe how you build an image, Docker will create the image. The image is stateless, that's really important. It means that if you stop, if you, um, it basically means that the image cannot encode any data. And um, restarting from images, if you run the container from an image again, it won't remember anything unless you configure it and then it'll touch on how you configure it to remember things because that's you need that for daily basis and then containers once you run an image it's called a container so hopefully this this terminology will be okay but you can just think of images as classes and containers as instances of the class so if you have some sort of load balancer you can start you can start at multiple you can just supply an image and you can start multiple containers all from that one image so to describe how to make an image you document something called docker files i'll show you how to make those but it's just a step by step, like it's just text, it's nothing fancy. And it just, you can't really do much logic. It just, it just explains how to make the image. So my demos, they'll be using Flask and Redis. Flask is a Python web framework and Redis is a quick little key value database. Not really database. But don't worry too much if you're not familiar with these tools because I won't be explaining how it really works. I'll just be showing you how you can dockerize the application. So the first one will be a quick hello world example, then we'll talk about how to link uh, Redis and then this web server, and then we'll talk about how to make it all a bit easier, because it'll get quite unwieldy in the end, and then you can really simplify things. Yeah, so let's get the demos going. So first up is our simple little hello world app. So when you run the app, this is just, don't worry too much if you don't know Flask, it's just setting up the application and it's running it. It's a Python as well, it's a Python, uh, it's a Python web framework. So it's nice and straightforward, you've got a requirements file, and you've got an app file. So what you'd normally do is you'd install the requirements to a virtual environment, set an environment variable telling you where the app would run from, and then you'd run it. But we can make it a little bit easier with Docker. So our Docker file is how we explain to tell Docker how to run our app. So firstly, we need to supply something called a base image. This starts with a from, and this will tell Docker what type of Linux you want, what type of uh, what type of OS we want to use, and what type of environment we want. So we're doing Python, and we'll use a Linux environment. So we'll say from 
Python 3.7.5 Alpine. So Alpine is a really small distribution of Linux, and it gives us access to all the normal Linux features, but it's, up, it's, it's good for Docker. You want to keep things lightweight. So the, this will just create a blank uh, Linux environment. We need to start adding our code to it. So we're going to use the command run make the slash app. What this does is this will create the slash app directory in the home of the Linux environment. The run command lets you run any command which is available in the base OS from the base image. So we can say run ls slash a, run touch a file, we can say run a dir. So we're creating this. Then we're going to use another command. Now this is another Docker command. This is run, this is make dir slash app. Sorry, worked it. This is like CD. It changes where the commands are being executed from. So now all our commands will be executed with respect to slash app on the image. Then we copy in requirements.txt. So copy is how you copy files from your local machine onto the container in, into the image. So here we're copying from requirements.txt on the left into slash app slash requirements.txt in our, in our image. Then we're going to install everything. Again, this is how we're using run. We're using run, just a run command like we would if we had the system up. So we're, kind of, so we're running it um, pip. We can, again, run any command we want. And we're going to copy. So this copies everything in our file, in our directory on the left, into the slash app directory. And then we can run it. That's everything we need. It's all set up. So let's say fast run, that's just closed. So to build the image, the first thing we need to do is run docker image t demo one dot. What this is doing, this is creating an image, which if you remember is the static form of a container. It's how we can, we can then use the image to build the container, to run the container, sorry. But so we're creating an image from the period at the end means the current directory, and we're gonna call it demo one. Run that. I actually forgot to say build it. <laughs> there we are. So here you can see it working its way through the Docker file. And here we are. I ran this last time, it's all cached, but in reality, it will take a bit longer. And now we can run it. So Docker container run, run the container. Dash dash rev means when we stop the container, it will delete the container. Dash it lets it run in a more interactive way uh, with the terminal. And dash p 5000 5000, that's binding a port on the container to the port. In, that's pointing a port from the container to a port like outside the container, so it's making a tunnel. If Flask is running the container on port 5000, that means we can access it by going to localhost 5000. And this is dash e flask app demo, flask app equals app.py. That's just setting an environment variable. That's needed for flask. Don't worry too much about that. Right. And it's, and it's up. You come over here, click refresh, and it's there. So it works. So what we've done again is we defined our, how we can build the image. So that's installing all the requirements and running it. And then we've just run, we've built the image and then run, the, run a container from the image. So a cool thing to notice is that where we're installing the requirements, we're not actually installing requirements at all on our, in our local system. We're in, well, we are, but we're, we're not installing it in the, like, the normal system, we're installing it in the Docker container. So we're not actually, um, polluting our file system with any sort of any other environments or virtual environments or anything. So if you were running, so this is Python, if you were running, say, a node app, it's exactly the same format. You just say from node and then you give the version alpine and then you'd install everything and then you'd say copy package.json and then you'd run npm install and then the final command would be how you'd run be npm start or how you want to do it. So yeah, that's the hello world example. Now, this is quite basic. We're going to show, I'm show you now how to do a more complicated example. So this is using Redis. And this will keep account of how many times we access the web page. Quite cool. So same setup. We have a basic app.py. Blank init.py. Docker file has not changed. It's the same as before. And requirements do the All we've done is add the Redis implementation. So we've got one container which is running our web server. Now we need to have one which is running the Redis. So we can pull it down, but then if we just pull it down by default and have the two running together, they won't be able to talk to each other. We need to create a network first. And that means that Docker will put them onto the same network and it will handle the DNS for us. So we can then in the Flask, 
simply say, instead of saying localhost, we can say Redis, because Flask is hand, uh, sorry, Docker is handling Redis, is mapping that to the Redis container's IP address. So first you need to run Docker network create. So we're creating our first network, and now we need to launch the Redis so we can go to Docker. Container. So there's something quite interesting happening here. Before we had to specify our image, but because we're pulling Redis from the official Redis image, we can just reference that there. So that's what's happening. So we're actually building it from an image which the Redis team have made and uploaded to Docker. So we're running it, and as before, we've got the standard flags where the port we're pulling is the default Redis port. That's why it's 6379. And we're launching it on the first network network, which is what we've created. So run that. So it's running. We can start our web server with Docker image build dash t demo two. Yep. And now we can run Docker container run. I haven't stopped the previous container. That's cool. Here we are. Now we can come over to it. Refresh it. It's going up. I think it's really neat. The cool thing is that the Redis, we don't actually have Redis defined in our environment. We're just pulling it from the Docker website. We're launching it as they want it. And now we're just able to connect to it using Redis there rather than having to reference the IP or say run them on local. Now we, there's an interesting thing that happens because I said that images are stateless. If we restart our Redis instance, all our hardware clicking the button's gone. So you can get around that using something called volumes. So we've got lots of long commands here. Like this, this, this one to run Redis isn't particularly short, and this one here to run the Flask app, that's even longer. So it's quite troublesome. I said that it would help you make code quicker and write and help run your code quicker. So we can use a tool called Docker Compose. What that does is it lets us define what commands we want to run to start our containers, and we can run them all at once. So it's described using YAML, which is a markup language. And you can see here, we're calling the Redis image, the ports, and the same for web. We're saying we want to build it from the current directory. It depends on Redis, so we'll run the Redis container first. Now, rather than saying dash e flask app equals app.py, we can reference it using an environment, uh, an environment file, so in .env. Uh, this, this is more just some stuff to help to test up as well, but we've got flask app as before. And in the YAML again, we have the ports being bound. And we're actually using something called volumes. So we're defining a volume here. And what it means is we're creating a volume down the bottom called Redis. And we're copying, so from the slash data folder of the Redis container, we're copying that into our Redis volume on the Docker desktop. So what that means is that when we restart it, it'll remember it. So that's a way to get around the containers being stateless. Now, with just one command, we can say Docker compose build. Docker compose. Oh. And now you can see it's creating the volumes in the networks, and bang, it's done. You've got the Flask server running, you've got Redis running. If we come over here and refresh it, you can see it's going up. If we stop it and run it again, it picks back up. So that's the volumes, it's loading it back in. So notice how we haven't actually had to define a network. Docker compose handles all the network create commands for us. And it also handles volume creation and it just makes everything really easy. So we can expand this as much as we want. If you wanted to add a background worker, we can just define a new one. So we could say background worker, image, ports, volumes, environment, file even. So yeah, that's Docker Compose. I hope that this has been quite a quick and short introduction to Docker, but I hope that you will be able to see how you can use it, how it's quite straightforward, how it's not too intimidating to use, and yeah, how to get started using Docker. Thank you.